Hello and welcome to this conversation with Jeff Krause. He is one of the creators of this experience called Fan Room Live. And it is where people can virtually meet really wonderful, fascinating people. After we had this conversation, I got to experience a fan room live, and it was with Jackie Ka Jackie Collin, who was played by Meg Ryan in a movie Against the Ropes. She's had a ridiculously fascinating life. I'm really glad that I got to meet her in this setup, and then I contacted her later, and she's gonna be in my channel later too. I have conversations with all kinds of fascinating people. It's so wonderful to get to know people from all different kinds of walks of life. Different things to promote, there's different stories to tell, stories to expand perspective, stories to help you grow and appreciate and be able to see things from a different angle. So I hope that you will stick around, subscribe to this channel, catch other conversations I've had, look forward to wonderful conversations that are coming, and just come along and be a part of this awesome community. My husband and I do live streams every Tuesday evening, Sweden time, and I do vlogs, just talking about mindset, talking about overcoming challenges, showing the cute and fun parts of life. So that's what else, that's the, uh, blah, 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 blah. that's the other stuff on this channel. Let's get to this conversation. Hello, Jeff Krause, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm really excited to have you here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really, uh, really appreciate you, uh, you know, bringing me on today. Totally. How, how's everything? Everything is pretty good. It is, it is summer over here in Sweden. It is, the air is nice and warm, but not too warm, it's perfect. How is it over there? Well, I'm in New York, but uh, even though, you know, you probably can't tell from my background. <laughs> no, I'm in New York and uh, the weather is actually, you know, pretty, uh, pretty beautiful. So I remember New York um, summers being, it's not quite summer yet, but I remember it being stifling. Like I was wearing skirts all the time and whenever I was in the car, just pulling them up as far as they could because it was just so awful. <laughs> What you do is you do these VIP online events so that people can like really talk almost like we're talking now, like, but talk to their idols. Is that, is that about right? It's called Fan Room Live. And basically what it is, uh, celebrities, influencers, um, you know, public figures, so to speak, uh, they host these town hall style events where we get all their fans together and the fans get to uh, be in their fan room, so to speak, or party. And they get to interact with the celebrity one-on-one, uh, -on -one, just like we're doing now, except that uh, they, can, they can rotate. You know, we rotate the fans one by one so that each one gets, uh, you know, gets time with, uh, with the celebrity. And we have all different, but it, it's a very unique experience because the celebrities... And the fans, sometimes it can get very, you know, very intimate. Um, you know, I've seen celebrities meet like longtime fans that, uh, you know, some of them even with, uh, you know, illness or, um, yeah, or even uh, disabilities or, or just people that, um, even just people that, it, you know, they get, you know, they tell the celebrity like, oh, I've been a fan of yours for, you know, 20 years, first time getting to meet you. And, you know, for the celebrity itself, uh, for themselves, it's a, a very special moment also because they get to, you know, give back to their fans. And yeah, it's, it's it can get very, uh, it's a lot of fun, but it can get very, um, you know, intimate and personal. Mm. Sounds powerful. Yeah. So I imagine so before COVID, you were doing like actual big in person events, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I founded a company called IE Group, which, um, you know, our, our company is all about uh, basically about marketing, special events, um, you know, influencers, celebrities. Uh, and we've been, <clears throat> we've been doing charity events and uh, all different types of, uh, activations and experiences for many, many years. 
And basically what happened was once, uh, once COVID hit and the pandemic started, my partner, who's a uh, booking agent, you know, for uh, celebrities, we kind of just didn't know what we were going to do. And we were like, oh, you know, let, let's just get, you know, let's just get some athletes and some, you know, some celebrity friends online and do some like, you know, some fun charity events because we didn't, we didn't know what, what was going to happen. Um, so I called Cedric the Entertainer, who's, you know, our partner and uh, now and, and it's, you know, been a good friend of ours for a long time. And I just kind of lightly threw the idea at him and he said, you know, Jeff, actually, this could be a, <laughs> this could be a, a, a long-term uh, model that, you know, you're probably not even thinking of. And we kind of just started strategizing and came up with this really, you know, unique concept that, you know, people can, celebrities can, can gather with their fans online and, hang out with them and and have these one-on-ones and uh yeah it's 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 been uh very interesting it's like this is huge because like there's people who can't leave their homes for whatever reason or you just can't afford a plane ticket all these things but would but thank goodness for the internet to just make all these dreams possible yeah, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, like Comic-Con, let's just say, comes to Australia. I'll just use that as an example. Well, let's say they come once a year and you want to meet your favorite celebrity. Now you could do that over the Internet, uh, you know, instead of waiting a year. I mean, you could still go to Comic-Con, but, it, you know, when they go, but... Now you can meet them right here on, on the fan room. Um, you know, cause like, even if let's say for example, Comic-Con is in, is in New York, a lot of people can't fly in or they, or they don't want to cause it's too expensive or it's whatever. Whereas now they have the opportunity that right here, uh, right here, they could just jump in and, and get to meet them. That is so neat. So what are some struggles? What have been some struggles with organizing this that you didn't, that you, if you could go back in time and tell your past self, you know, you can avoid this if you just go this way. Um, there's always struggles, but it, it's kind of hard to say, well, if I did it this way, then it would have been this way. Or if I did it, you know, one way, then it would have been the problem with, with that, um, with that analyzation is that anytime you're starting a new project, there's learning curves. And once you start looking at should have, would have, could have internally, it, it can start to get to you that you didn't do something some way that, um, maybe things would have prolonged faster. Mm. So I don't really, you know, I, I learn from the experiences, but I don't, I don't dwell on the, uh, the past of like, oh, this didn't go my way. And, you know, this should have been this and this should have been that. I, I, I don't, I just try and fix it to move forward. If that makes sense. That's a much better way to go about it. It's, it's much healthier to just be flexible. I've had, you know, businesses and it's just, it's not, it's not healthy to keep uh, dwelling on, you know, past mistakes or past errors because it's not going to change anything. You still made the error. You still made the, the mistake. All you could do is just, you know, learn from it. So how did you get into this VIP celebrity organizing things world? In college, I was kind of just, you know, throwing these parties and um, started working with a modeling agency, organizing their, their events, doing their marketing. And then I opened up a, uh, a bar lounge. At, this was many, many years ago. And I kind of just, um, I kind of just grew my network and started uh, consulting for different restaurants, different lounges. Um, and then I built my, my, business of events uh, to coincide with that. So, you know, 
between that and then my, you know, I, I partnered with uh, my business partner, uh, Mitch Faulkner, who owns 123 Talent. So kind of together, we kind of, um, you know, combined strengths, so to speak. Um, you know, I would introduce him to, you know, my celebrity contacts. He would introduce me to his. And we kind of just have this um, synergy, so to speak. Between that and also just building, um, I, I've had, I've been able to maintain uh, long-term clients, event clients. Uh, as example, George Wayne, who's a former, you know, Vanity Fair writer. Uh, I've been doing his events for over 15 years. So, you know, it's just a progressive, like doing events, keeping my relationships going, building to doing more things, you know, evolving in, in that capacity and um, expanding my, my, you know, different uh, levels of, of things that I can do, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. It's really interesting to think about just starting from college parties to like getting the ideas and well, going on and well, they weren't, they weren't really, they weren't really college parties. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they were more, um, they were more parties and restaurants and nightclubs. Oh, okay. College party to me sounds like a, like a frat or party or, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was, I was throwing parties in Manhattan, uh, even though I was going to, uh, to college. Wow. So it was a little bit, a little, yeah, a little bit, a little bit different. I, I wasn't, um. I wasn't throwing parties in like the dorms and, 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 you know, the fraternities and all that stuff. That wasn't really my, my jam, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> I was really more. No, no, it's just, it just wasn't for me. I, yeah. I just wasn't, you know, it, was, it had nothing to do with classy. It just wasn't, wasn't my, wasn't my thing. Cup of tea. Well, I have a couple of, uh, couple stories that from fandom live that are uh very i don't i don't they're fun for me because they i get to organize them but um there's a couple that are, are very, very uh, uh touching so to speak um you know we had one with uh jake the snake roberts this is when covid you know right in the middle of the heart of the, the pandemic and when he logged in, uh, he noticed that there was a girl in there that uh, was a paraplegic or, or some sort of disability that he has been visiting since the 1980s. And obviously he can't see her because he can't fly to her. Can't, you know, he wasn't going anywhere. So when they saw each other, it was kind of like that, oh my God, this is, you know, this is great because now I get to, you know, interact with her and whatnot. Whereas, you know, he couldn't, and he didn't know she was logging in. So it was very, very uh, special moment um, that I always remember. And I always kind of remember him also saying, you know, like when we asked him, why does he want to do this? He said, well, look, if you turn on television and watch a, a wrestling show right now, there's no fans in the building. So believe me, any, any athlete, any wrestler, any comedian, any, any musician, they're now really realizing the value of their fans. Because they're the ones that buy the merch. <laughs> they're the ones that buy the tickets. They're the ones that buy your music. They're the ones that buy the pay-per-views. They're the ones... It's all about the fans. Yeah. So I, I thought that was very, um, you know, very cool. Uh, we did another one with uh, Paul White. Uh, he used to be called The Big Show in the WWE. Mm. And we had him on. Uh, and actually, in the middle of the event, there was a charity that came in with uh, that, that connects wrestlers to kids with cancer mm -hmm. and one of the kids diehard big show fan or paul white fan so to speak uh from you know many you know many years and 
he got to meet him and the kid is in England and he got to meet him, talk to him for, you know, maybe 15 minutes. Um, and it, Paul actually donated the shirt off his back to the charity because the kid asked him to sign the shirt and said, Hey, listen, if you want to auction it off more than welcome to. So those were two, some, some great moments. Um, another one, you know, we had uh, Sean Kanan from um, Karate Kid with uh, some of his, you know, and, and of course, uh, you know, Cobra Kai universe um, with, uh, you know, Vidal and uh, William Christopher Ford. They're all from the Karate Kid, you know, Cobra Kai universe. And Sean was asked <laughs> if he's going to be, uh, you know, on the new you know, new season of Cobra Kai. And he didn't, he didn't say yes, but he just said, you haven't seen the last of Mike Barnes. Or I don't think you've seen the last of Mike Barnes. So it was like, whoa, wait a minute. Are you allowed to talk about this? <laughs> Are you allowed to talk about this kind of thing? And he was very, um, he was much more free speech about it. Although he didn't give the, hey, I'm going to be in season four, he did give the inclination that we will be seeing him at some point. Insider information. <laughs> which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could think of a whole bunch more, but those are, those are three that uh, stand out on the top of my, you know, top of my head. That is so cool. Oh man, Cobra Kai, that show is so intense. I had to take a break from it, <laughs> especially around like the 6th of January. I was like, okay, there's so much stress in my heart right now. I can't watch the show right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, I love that show. You know, I mean, it's- uh, I'm back to it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, nostalgia is just they really did a great job in in combining millennials with nostalgia yeah and the the, the thing that like with our age we need we need our characters to have layers it's not like he's just a jerk because he's successful and stuff now and he was the protagonist in the first movie and he's bad because he's an alcoholic and loser like no they're complicated people like real people are well they're complicated people but i mean you also have to remember i mean in the first um you know karate kid was all based on uh you know ralph macho being bullied that was the whole that's the whole premise of the whole show is like he's you know he gets bullied and he's uh you know he overcomes it by you know Mr. Miyagi learning karate and, and knowing how to defend himself. And like, it's that whole, um, it, it's that whole underdog, you know, story of, 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 of overcoming. But here's the thing, they were kids then. So now, yeah, you know, uh, uh, Johnny Lawrence character might be, um, he might have been, let's say, a bully uh, back then, but now there's really that kind of fine line of edge of like, well, maybe this guy is actually a pretty good dude, but he's just got like some deep rooted issues that's been going on uh, past yeah. in that time frame between then and now that he's kind of grown up, but not really, but he's, you know. Ugh trying to do the right thing they're really diving into his character in a sense in his side of the story more than they're diving into ralph macchio's yeah because karate oh, kid was all about ralph macchio i would i would really love to keep talking about this like it's like oh i want to keep talking about this but i should talk she talk to you about stuff related to fam room live and stuff maybe we can talk no about no it's, it's all and keep, and keep it's all about, about um <laughs> cobra kai <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, it's all good. We're, we're here to, you know, here to converse. And uh, I'm just giving you my, you know, personal, you know, outlook of it, of what I, you I know, what it. I watch and what I see. 
it's so it's like it's no fun to watch things when you're not doing it with someone else like if you don't right. have someone to share it with it it's just that not the not as fun like when, yeah. people, when people do the fam room life thing is like are people watching the individual interactions or are those personal yeah, no, uh, here, here's the thing. When you sign up to uh, to join a Fan Room Live event, all the fans get to watch the one-on-ones. Okay, cool. So, you get to share Yeah, everybody gets to watch until we get the VIP section. The VIP section is private. Okay. But outside of that, the first part is public. So it first goes in, you know, the stage of, well, the fans that are obviously you know, logged in, get to, uh, get to watch. Uh, and then eventually, you know, we, uh, you know, we put the, the first part out there so that, you know, people could see, but, um, no, if you, you sign up for fan room, you're getting an experience. You're getting to watch, uh, all the fan, the other fans interact with, uh, the, the celebrity and that that's part of the special thing about that it. Is. It's like, then there's a sense of community around it that I bet people have made friends. Exactly. Is there like a chat kind of section where people can connect and, and chat with each other during? The yeah. The, the, the problem, the, the thing is, is that um, there's a chat bar, but it, it's, they're not really interacting in that, um, in that sense, like the fans themselves uh i mean hey listen i you know somebody could see somebody post something in the chat bar and then decide to you know look that person up and dm them or 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 however i mean i'm sure the fans have have interconnected but we wouldn't um that's not really the main uh focus if that makes sense yeah, because totally makes when sense. you're in there when you're in there for an hour or two hours a lot of times the fans just want to hear the stories they want to yeah. hear you know they want to hear the good you know the good stuff so they're glued to the screen <laughs> because a lot of times the celebrities are going into uh behind the scenes stories of how they did this who they interacted with that what you know uh the inner workings of this and that so it, it's 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 very um it's very engaging to, to that point. So I don't know how much interaction they necessarily have of talking to each other, but that's not to say that that doesn't happen. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. So who've been some of your favorite guests? George Lopez was great. Um, he was a lot of fun to have on, uh, you know, DL Hughley was great. Uh, I personally loved having, you know, Obviously, Jake the Snake Roberts, because he's you know, <laughs> a lot of fun, uh, you know, to listen to and to, uh, you know, to talk to. Uh, we just had Kenny Aronoff on from, um, you know, he's a drummer from, you know, Bon Jovi and uh, Rolling Stones. And, you know, he, he was a lot of he was a great energy to, to have on. We had uh, Morgan Fairchild. Um, we've had a, you know, a bunch of people that were really, uh, really great. I mean, there's a lot of people that I'm not thinking of and yeah. Paul White, of course, was awesome to have as well. Cause you know, yeah. he could talk about, you know, wrestlers. He could talk about his, you know, his TV show, uh, on Netflix, the big show show and other things when they're on they're they're talking to people as if they're, you know, they're friends and they're. They're, it's very informal and they're kind of just answering questions and, and diving to their perspective. So it's, it's a little bit. Um, Have you met your heroes or are there still some people that you'd really like to get connected to? There's always people that I want to get connected to. I mean, you know, <laughs> you can never have enough uh, connections, so to speak. Um, as far as heroes go, I mean, I mean, yeah, I would love to meet Stone Cold. That would be like, you know, coolest thing ever for me personally. But hey, you know, <laughs> like that's just me. We just, you know, take it day by day, basically. Mm -hmm. 
and try to use all that creative energy and marketing energy to figure out how to make those connections? Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where it's kind of right time, right place. Can you introduce me to the PR person of, of Steve Austin's and maybe they can get me in <laughs> like... Well, it's not as simple as as that. Um, or you'd already t- talked to him. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't mean that. I just mean, um, of course, getting in touch with their PR or management. Um, but it's also the, it's also who's introducing you. Um, it's also the timing. The timing, you know, does the the talent have some downtime? Uh, do, are they very busy? Is it something that they're, are they people, you know, are they, are they uh, people friendly? Are mm-hmm. they, you know, yeah. is there a charity that they're, that they're, uh, there, there's so many things that, that, that go into it um, to make, you know, whether somebody's going to be uh, interested at the time of doing it or not. Yeah. I've had people tell me no. And then months later, tell me yes. Mm -hmm. so it's like if I had emailed you that would have just stayed in spam forever but because of Eileen you just popped onto a zoom call (laughs) yeah well exactly only because well only because if you would have well if you would have emailed me um I might have looked at it as well who is you know who is this person emailing me about you know how you know I, I might have had some questions as far as well, I might have had just had a lot of questions about you know who's emailing me and why and, and whatever um, and that's just you know that's just natural you know uh, reactions when yeah. somebody's emailing you that that you don't know but um, if you're email had and this is just a marketing you know marketing tip uh if your email had something of like relevance to okay well hey jeff we you know researched something that you did and we you know like if there was something that i was like oh okay it's a podcaster that wants me specifically for x y and z but as but as you said it's you're working with Eileen. I'm working with Eileen. It was a very easy fit. Eileen asked me, Hey, do you want to go on the show? I said, Hey, sounds cool. Let's do it. (laughs) And that's just the kind of connections you dream of. You dream of, of meeting the Eileen's out there that can just make things easy. Oh yeah. She's the, she's the, uh, the magic maker. I mean, (laughs) She's the best. (laughs) In the very first few minutes of the conversation, you mentioned it being so intimate that sometimes people were getting emotional. And I was wondering, does like, does, is that common for people to cry and really like, it's you, I can't believe it. No, you know, we really haven't had those kind of, you know, it's interesting. We haven't had, the only person that we got a little bit of that and it wasn't crying. It was more of just like the fans were kind of like lusting in, in a sense. Uh, no, not, not that way. Oh, okay. I meant like, I meant like, oh my God, you know, I, I'm, I'm just so happy to meet you. And like, they didn't even have a question. They just were so happy to meet her. Mm-hmm. And that was Holland Roden, Holland Roden from, from Teen Wolf. But um, a lot of them were, uh, you know, were girls from all different countries in their early 20s. And they were just so uh, excited to meet her. Some of them didn't even have anything to ask her. They were just so happy to be face to face with her. Mm. Um, But it wasn't really, we haven't really gotten any of the fans like that, that Mm, cried unless they were, unless there might've been one or two that might've cried and it might've been more of like situational. Like uh, there's one person that, um, you know, their, their mom was sick with cancer and their favorite uh, wrestlers, Kurt Angle, like that kind of stuff. But not 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 those hardcore, hardcore fans that are like, you know, that can't have a conversation because they're just 
too busy, you know, flipping out. Kind mm. of thing. Yeah, I never, I never had anything to do with any celebrity until, um, well, the first thing was I went to a comic con, couldn't afford the, the, pic, the picture and the autograph. So I just shook hands and said, it's great to meet you and chatted with some people. And two of the special guests there was Barbara Eden from My Dream of Jeannie. And it was like, oh, that's really, really cool, neat. But when I saw Bill Daly, I, I actually did cry. Like in the, not like I get like freaking out fan way, but like, this is a face I've watched so many hundreds of times growing up and it's him and he's so old and nobody's waiting in line for him to talk to him. Like it broke my heart and I just like wanted to tell him that he was wonderful and he was a special part of my childhood and he really appreciated it, but I never saw myself as the kind of person to do that. You know, and listen, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, with that. I mean, you, you gotta remember that um, some, I mean, look, you grew up watching him. He might have, he might have been, uh, you might have been watching him during some tough times that, you know, got you through whatever, whatever you were going through. So, yeah, I mean, there are times, I mean, there are, and listen, we've had people that said, like, hey, you know, we, we watched you when, you know, we're going through some rough times or whatever, whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, that happens. I've, uh, I, I've done that before, but, you know, again, I, I've done it more of, um, in a, in a constructive, uh, manner, more just to say like, Hey, you know, I appreciate you kind of thing. Not, you know, oh my God, I'm, you know, starstruck to the, you know, to the earth you walk on kind of thing. <laughs> did you did you ever see community when uh donald glover meets um um georgie laforge lavar burton and he's like hi i'm lavar burton it's, i didn't but uh it sounds pretty funny that guy has got an amazing face <laughs> and every time donald glover like, oh yeah yeah <laughs> If you're ever having a bad day, just look up that community clip and you will laugh. <laughs> that's awesome. You can go to fanroomlive.com for anybody that's listening and uh, just keep, uh, yeah, just keep uh, checking out what we, what we have coming up. I can tell that you just have a really big heart for this and wanting to see people have a good experience and have a, have a real connection. That is so cool. The one thing I also love is, you know, we've had situations like um, iced tea and cocoa we had. And, you know, we thought they were going to do, uh, you know, two minutes with each fan. I was like, listen, I want to give back to my fans. Gave them like five to 10 minutes each. Yeah. I mean, and that, that was coming from him, not coming from us. So you know, it's, uh, it's really beautiful to see those, those kind of situations where, uh, you know, you have a, a celebrity or an artist that, that really cares. Mm, that is cool. Yeah. And in fact, Sean Kanan, same thing, uh, from, you know, from Cobra Kai and he, uh, he gave his fan, all his fans extra time. Mm -hmm. all of them. It's a great, listen, I, I love doing it. It's a great experience. And, um, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know. It's great to see these people's uh, interactions and, uh, you know, people getting to meet their, their heroes. It's, it's just a beautiful thing. And, uh, you know, my event production company is called IE Group. If anybody wants to check it out or look at a plan an event in New York for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, if you share this video amongst your sphere of influence, you ask other people to share it or whatever, then I'm sure it can make its way to some New York people. There you go. Hey, listen, you never know. People you never on uh, YouTube, it's from all over the world. So. so the way that I end my videos is I give hugs. Hugs. Well, I'm giving you a virtual hug right now. That's what we, we take what we can get. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thanks so much for having me. Bye.
Bye. Thank you for being here. Hugs to you! <laughs> Thank you for watching this. If you've made it this far, please like this video. Please stick around. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Watch another one. This is really good. These are really good videos to listen to while you're like folding laundry, you're doing dishes, or anything boring like that.